Good afternoon. I'm greeting you from the National Blue Army Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Washington, New Jersey. Today, like many in our tri-state area, we felt an earthquake, which is unusual for this area. Its epicenter was just 15 miles from our shrine. Things like this shake us up, of course, no pun intended. Many people are also shaken or at least concerned about the total eclipse that will occur on Monday, which falls on the Feast of the Annunciation this year. April 8th, as it was moved from the traditional date of March 25th due to Holy Week. The eclipse, it is said, will begin in Jonah, Texas, and pass through seven towns in the U.S. named Nineveh, and end near the town of Nineveh in Canada. For anyone who is a follower of biblical history and of Jesus' warnings that the people of Nineveh, who repented, would rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. This could be more than a coincidence. There are also rumblings of a third world war. Certainly what is taking place in Ukraine and Israel could easily spark into something much greater, especially when political decisions and diplomatic relationships are involved. And the Fatima prophecy that whole nations would be annihilated has not been fulfilled fully in a way that is evident, such as the prophecy of the second world war, which clearly came true. What should all of this mean to us? We have been given the solution from heaven to achieve peace in our world and in our own selves. And we've been given the tools from the church to respond to Jesus' call to amend our lives and make reparation for our brothers and sisters who still are still are on their way. Folks, we have work to do. It falls on us who are Catholic especially, especially who have the sacraments and the Eucharist and the great Marian devotions and prayers in our arsenal. At Fatima, Mary especially spoke to us and asked us to pray the rosary, a very Catholic devotion, to go to confession and receive Holy Communion on first Saturdays, Catholic sacraments, to offer up our sufferings and unite them to the cross of Christ, a Catholic perspective on the mystery of redemptive suffering that has flowed throughout the church since the teaching of the apostles, to be consecrated to Jesus through Mary and live that consecration, meaning to become sanctified and live holy lives. Every day we are called to participate in God's plan of salvation for the redemption of the human race. The angel of peace at Fatima told us to make everything a sacrifice and offer it to God for the conversion of, of nations, for the conversion of sinners. By doing this, you will thus draw down peace upon your nation, he said. He also told us to make reparation for the crimes of mankind, for the offenses, sacrilege, and indifference toward the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist, meaning we are to offer Eucharistic reparation to the Father in heaven for the sins of mankind. Today is First Friday, the day in which we especially honor the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The promises associated with this devotion are many. Besides receiving Holy Communion today, we can honor the heart of Jesus and make reparation before his image by praying a rosary or a chaplet of mercy. We can do an hour of Eucharistic adoration in his honor. If you are in the area of the Blue Army Shrine in Washington, New Jersey, I invite you to join us tonight for a night of love vigil of reparation from 9 p.m. to midnight in our Blessed Sacrament Chapel. Tomorrow is first Saturday. Our Lady of Fatima asked us on this day to make reparation for the blasphemies against her Immaculate Heart by going to confession, receiving Holy Communion, praying a rosary, and spending 15 minutes with her while meditating on the life of Christ and the mysteries of the rosary. This devotion would help draw down grace and mercy for the conversion of sinners and help save souls from hell. Our response to these devotions are spiritual acts of mercy that can offer, that we actually can offer to the Father in heaven. Sunday is the great feast of divine mercy. Our Lord promises that a whole ocean of graces are poured out on the souls who approach the font of his mercy by going to confession and receiving Holy Communion. Jesus offers us a complete renewal of our baptismal grace and a complete cleansing of our souls, renewing within us all the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit that we received at baptism. Monday is the Feast of the Annunciation. We can attend Mass in honor of the Blessed Mother, even though it is not a holy day of obligation. We can also offer a rosary in her honor and reflect on the joyful mysteries. I invite you to look upon these times as the time to buckle down and get serious about our responses to God's call to repentance and amendment of life.
The angel in the third part of the secret of Fatima was about to strike the earth with a flaming sword that would set the world on fire. St. Faustina saw this same vision 18 years later during the divine mercy revelations. The angel cried out, penance, penance, penance. We who have been given the great gift of our Catholic faith, the fullness of the gospel, the sacraments, and all the wondrous devotions should all be responding, even more so than the pagans of Nineveh. May we not be held accountable for our inaction. God bless you, and Mary keep you in her immaculate heart.